What's up, everybody? Stay tuned after this quick trail ride. We're going to give Mud Cricket a bath, and then we're going to get into it. dirty. It's bath time, people. So we just got back from a small trip. Uh, did a little trail riding today uh, with Mud Cricket. And she did okay. Got a little bit of noisy rear end. Uh, I do believe that's got a lot to do with my suspension. Uh, so here in the coming months, I'll probably be working on that. But I wanted to give you the rundown uh, I'll walk around if you will. So without any further ado, here she is in all her glory. And I think this is my noise right here because this cage is kind of tied in. I only have it tied in from here. This bar comes out quite a ways and it's also tied in to the original shock mount here right here and there probably should have brought that down a little bit farther but I didn't want to drill holes through my fenders so this side's looking good and uh, the other side well not so much because I do believe it's starting to beat that up pretty bad up there so my cage is probably moving I may need to weld some angle on here and probably bolt it you know through the top and underneath to kind of use this whole uh corner of the package shelf the package shelf is framed so i should be able to tie into that pretty good uh, so anyway we'll start with the engine it is a porsche 914 power plant type 4 uh, started life as a 1700 cc we maintain the stock crank put larger pistons and cylinders in it which now makes it a 1911 cc uh, with 44 idf webers she does produce some pretty decent uh some pretty decent power i mean it's not a speed demon by any means but it does good thermostat can't go anywhere without that my eight pass oil cool uh it's a rapid cool eight pass and uh 180 degree thermostat uh which also ties in with my wix filter and some other custom shit that i had to do was this here this is actually a standard oil cooler adapter basically i've cut it welded the top of it and then drilled it straight through and and so we have so we've got a straight shot running into each hose the original oil filter um, basically we've cut that off and opened it up on the inside on the back side to allow flow 
plugged off one there's my oil temp sensor so it's coming right off of this thing here um and as far as i know it's it's pretty works pretty good you know there's my oil pressure sending unit the oil breather box uh was purchased from cip1 and of course my msd ignition well my dizzy and blaster 2 coil so a lot of work in this a lot of fabrication work yes i do have a tow bar or ball hitch rather a receiver uh she does have three by three trailing arms with porsche 930 cv joints uh cv performance four-wheel disc and Bilstein 5100 series shocks in the rear. I'm, maybe I'll, uh, I don't know. I want to get a set of 5100s for the front, but I don't think it really needs it. The front's pretty stiff, especially with those spring shocks on there. They're not true coilovers. They're probably the empty crappy ones. I picked them up at a swap meet. So, uh, but yeah, the rear wing, Rick over at Big Wig Race Cars, he does a quality project it took a while to get it but uh I'm, I'm i'm happy with it it's it's light enough i mean it's just strong enough to you know withstand anything i'm gonna dish out and uh so far i'm liking it i'm, I'm having fun driving her around we have some issues with it not so much but That wasn't, that wasn't thought out very well. I need to tighten those up. Uh, the front shocks are kind of crappy. So, uh, but I do have a set of Hella horns. Uh, Harbor Freight winch painted, of course, not working yet. I have to wait till I get dual batteries before I get into all that. The front bumper is a standard dual tube bumper and we added the brush guard to it and I kind of plated that in and then added these lights in there I did have some peel and stick lights in there which were kind of gross uh, I didn't really like the way they looked the headlights don't know the manufacturer I got them on eBay they were kind of cool they look cool they don't really work very well they're not uh, not performance wise oh and I do have some nick tuning if I'm pronouncing that right. Mic tuning fog lights or driving lights, I guess we'll call them. Uh, they're, they're absolutely too bright to be running on the road. So I kind of leave them covered up. The front beam was widened six inches. Uh, and the suspension on this <clears throat> is actually, um, man, it's pretty rusty under there. I've, I've taken two sets of beams and cut each one in half um, with the exception of in three inches off of each side. So it was widened. I can't really get in there to show you, I don't think. Uh, okay, so there you go. Wow. All right, so I am missing my cover plate. I need to get that taken care of. But if you look in there, you'll see where I actually cut the beam over three inches from center on each side. And it actually has four individual torsion packs. The torsion packs were cut two inches off of center. So there's actually a two inch gap where the weld is. If you were to you know, like cut the tube in half. Uh, so you've got each, each torsion has its own spring pack set. These were put on for the tow bar, so it's not sliding back and forth with the extra, the extra width. Um, hood pin, I do have it just bolted down, so it is a it is a major pain in the ass to remove the hood. Uh, with two people, not not an issue, but I do have to pull. Uh, I do have to pull the limb risers off. Uh, what else have we got? These are basically I could use them. I don't. I haven't really felt a need to use them yet. 
but uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, it's a little dirty in here as I have been running it. You guys saw the door panels that I did. My dash. Ugh. These are Porsche 914 gauges with an extra set of oil, uh, oil temp, pressure. Uh, I do have a boost gauge. I plan on putting a turbo in here. I have not done that yet. I may not ever do that. I don't know yet. And a volt gauge. Uh, these two lights here are oil and generator. And, uh, of course, we have the upgraded, uh, yeah, 12-volt <laughs> outlet, USB charge, push-button start, and yes, it does work. Let me make sure we're in neutral. Look at that. Can't believe she fired right up just like that. So, uh, I do have a CB in here. The tunes are pushed through four MB quartz six and a halfs. We're gonna go around to the back. My block punk there. These are the six and a halfs. These are also MB quartz tweets. There is a 10 inch Orion XTR uh, inside this box. I do believe we put the ports way too big it sounds kind of open like it's like it's an open air so i think we're going to need to port one of these up but that big one there is running the 10 this is running everything else and i do not have a back seat i'll get up in here and show you guys i have a lot of tools and crap down there so there's that but i do not have a back seat let me see if i can zoom out there we go I don't know if that's any better. Ugh, lift this up. And I do have a battery and a way too many wires. But this is my ignition system. I had to put in a tack adapter. And all that is powered through this little six pin rail. Um, trailer switch. Uh, that's how I actually get all four lights working in unison. Uh, I have a powered trailer adapter uh, and all of my amplifiers and everything, well, the only two amplifiers I'm running right now are fused. Uh, I will be putting a second battery in. Once I get the second battery in, I will be able to run the winch. I do have a fire extinguisher set up in here. Uh, what else? My Cooltech floor mats. I love these things to death. They're just awesome. I do have a fused panel up under here, <clears throat> another one here, and my stock fuse panel, which in hindsight, uh, for future reference, I will be rebuilding this eventually someday, because there's a couple of them in there that I just can't get to. I probably should have put, you know, like a little cut in here or something, something along those lines. These strips here, I have them pulled out right now the fuse for it i have the fuse pulled out for those right now but those are my interior lighting i've got one on each side can't really see the other one but it's over there um scat pro car seats bug pack t handle shifter which i love that thing to death and uh so yeah roof rack uh both of these are auto feel uh 42 inch lights yes they're very very bright they light up a lot. Uh, I do have, and they are, they do work. Um, and I've got lights all the way around it uh, because if I'm sitting at camp or hunting, fishing, whatever the case may be, I can turn on one side, and everybody's you know can see what the hell they're doing. One thing I forgot to show you is my overhead switch panel that actually runs all of my lighting. Um, the power for this and the signal wires are all running down to a major fuse panel. Oh, I'm sorry, not a fuse panel. They are, I don't know if I can be able to show you this or not, but we're going to try. All of that is running down oops, into that relay board. 
In the center of that relay board is my multiplexer. That's what allows me to listen to the radio and use the CB at the same time. Uh, not that I do, but it uses, utilizes the CB antenna. So, let's see, what else? This is my fuel fill, my little custom dog bowl. See the little paw prints in there? Kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. So that's my fuel fill. And, uh, what else could I really tell you about it? Uh, I did custom make the sidebars. Fabricated the rear fenders uh, out of some semi-tandem fenders. So that's basically it, a nutshell. And if you have any... If, if there's anything on the car that you guys want to see up close and personal, let me know. And I'll take you through it step by step. Uh, I'm not against making videos to help everybody understand, you know, how I did it or, you know, how I would have, how I should have not done it. <laughs> so at any rate, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you all on the flip side.